Hi folks, Doyle Dykes here. Welcome to my Sunday String Along. I'll be stringing along today with a couple of great guitars. This is my Olsen. Playing some songs to uh, honor Chet Atkins, who would have been 100 years old. We just had his convention in Nashville, Chet Atkins Appreciation Society Convention. And there's a lot of picking like this going on. song actually guitar just for fun and just have a little fun with guitars here's my Olsen Pernambuco and uh, now we'll play the resurrection guitar here and uh, <clears throat> this is what I do when I come to my room I just like to plug them in and have fun sometimes most of the time don't even plug them in to be honest with you <laughs> uh, now this one does not have a preamp like this one so uh, I'll turn the volume up a little more.
rejoicing that will make when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory onward to the prize before us soon as beauty will be home soon the pearly gates will open we will tread the streets of gold when we all get to heaven what a day Rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing. Shout the victory. <laughs> it's in there. Yeah, man. I'll never forget. Uh, I was out in the backyard, and you probably heard me tell this story, but I had my little dog. Little Egypt and uh, Little E, and I didn't name her that. My brother-in-law, Buddy, named her that, and I get you in trouble, Buddy. And <laughs> but I call her Little E. I love Little E. And I was walking around the, during the pandemic, and just she was a brand new little puppy to us. And uh, and the Lord spoke to me. God spoke to me. Call Ricky Skaggs and tell him that you love him. And I didn't want to mess with Ricky. I mean, you know, he's he's busy. Everybody was just kind of shut down though at that time, but. But still, I mean, the Lord prompted me, call, just text him, text us. I just felt an urgency in my spirit, do it now. And so I, okay. And I text him, Ricky, I love you, brother. You're such a blessing to me. And I'm not just trying to throw, you know, drop a name here, but God spoke to me to do that. And he answered me right back. I love you, dog. You're a you're blessing, good brother, and this, that, and the other. And he said, what are you, what are you doing uh, September the whatever it was, and I said, oh, I'm going, what do you want me to do, you know, because so, so much was uh, shut down, and uh, he said, well, we're going to have an all worship and praise, two days, 48 hours of con continual, continuous uh, worship and praise at the uh, Ryman Auditorium. And I want you to be there with me. And I and Haley, I asked my, my daughter Haley, and we went over there and, and played and sang together right before Ricky. And he came out with Gordon Kennedy. Oh, man, I mean, it was amazing. And you see, that was an opportunity. That's an opportunity. When God speaks to you, and he puts it right there sometimes in front of you, but you have to act on it. So I'm going to be talking about that uh, today. And... Uh, also play another guitar here that, that really means that this is the resurrection guitar and uh george bowen and andrew bowen and uh, also uh my good friend james olson and his this guitar and and then this is a wonderful guitar here as well and this is a kirk sand kirk passed away this past year
Well, that's not perfect. I think I had a blunder here or there. I haven't played that in a long time, and I should. I should play it more. I wrote that for Kirk years ago, and uh, and I always said Jonathan Birchfield plays that song better than I do. <laughs> and he did a wonderful rendition on that. It's called uh, Laguna Sand is the name of it. And I'll never forget this little, little kid who was a little kid then. He's growing up now. He said, can you play that song you do, Laguna Salad? <laughs> I said, Laguna Salad. He said, he, I said, you, L Laguna Sand? Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> but Kirk Sand. And uh, what a wonderful guitar. I mean, listen to this again. with no sound hole and it's just it's an amazing it's an amazing guitar it really is it's it's braced like a regular classical guitar for you guitar nerds like me out there and uh, they they come no better than a Kirk Sand guitar there are other good guitars out there too you know the Godin makes a really nice one that's way more affordable as far as that goes but um Kirk had his own thing going and uh, when Chet gave me this guitar here uh, he says, you know, you to, uh, the, he talked about the Kirk Sand model, Kirk Sand guitar, and uh, it was, uh, it was, it was. Uh, he said he just came up with a better mousetrap, as the way uh, Chet put it. But uh, Kirk was the guy that actually in, invited me to play at his booth at the Chet Atkins Appreciation Society convention, which just went on this past week. You know, Chet would have been a hundred years old this year. And so we were honoring Chet, you know, but I also wanted to honor Kirk. And uh, Kirk invited me to play there. Nobody knew me. I mean, Ch actually, Chet did. Chet gave me this guitar before I ever played the Chet Atkins Appreciation uh, Society convention, but no one had ever invited me. And I'd heard about it, but I just didn't know much. He said, well, why don't you play at my booth? And then when I did, and I met Dr. Pritchard and, and, uh, <laughs> and Dr. Mark, I, call him. I don't think he knew what to think of me either. Most people didn't, you know, because I, I wrote a lot of my own songs, and I, somebody said, yeah, I like his songs, but they have weird titles, you know. Dr. Mark didn't say that, but somebody else there did. And, and I get it because, I mean, the jawbone, you know, talking, you know, about in the Bible. <laughs> but, the, the, you know, t with Samson and that whole thing. But, and, uh, you know, and, and Man of Melody and things like that, that I wrote songs uh, that that talked about biblical things, you know, because I, I, I really surrendered all this over to the Lord a long, long time ago. In, in fact, when I got saved, uh, I raised my hands. A lot of you know the story. I was 11 years old. I said, Lord, give me a job to do, and I'll always tell people about you. And so that came first. And then right after that, I, I had a desire to play a guitar. And I had not played guitar, but maybe just a little bit. Mom and Dad tried to get me to play, but then, man, I went for it. And that's when I started playing the guitar. And so, uh, to me, it's always been a part of my walk with the Lord. He gave me a gift to, to, uh, and something to do for Him. And, and I still do that. And I'm, I'm still at it here at 70 years of age now. But I, but I love the Lord. He, he comes first in my life. And then the guitar, of course, well, family even before that, but, but, but the guitar comes later, you know, and uh, so I don't worship this, and uh, not saying that you do, but I'm just saying that we, you know, if you just give it over to him, just give it to the Lord, just give it to him, and uh, there are opportunities ahead that, that you could never imagine. I mean, I've played all over the world. You know, of course, a lot of you know I played at the Cavern Club where the Beatles started. And I, I played at some of the largest venues. I mean, I played with Greg Laurie at a, one of his Harvest Crusades a few years ago with, uh, I think, about 50,000 people. Uh, it's, I've seen some amazing things. I, I really have. I've played in a lot of trade shows. I, I know a lot of musicians. I met some of the greatest guitar players in the world. Of course, Eric Johnson's a very good friend of mine, and Steve Vai, and uh, uh, you know it goes on. Steve Lukather, Al Demiola. I've met some of, the, and, and of course James Burton. Of course, Dwayne Eddy. That's just died. And Chet and Les Paul and, and uh, Merle Travis. Those guys that really meant a lot uh, to me in my life. And I played with a lot of these guys. But I, but I gave my heart to the Lord, and then I gave, and also my music was always a part of that for me, you know. 
But a lot of musicians haven't totally surrendered their, their gift to him. And I, I just want to say, and let me ask you this. Are you bored with the Lord? Now, now, come on. If you are, if you're a Christian, you play a guitar. Let me ask you that. Are you bored? Are you bored with the Lord? Because you definitely don't have to be. I have some scriptures written down here. David Bowie said this. I don't know where I'm going next from here, he said. But I promise you this. It won't be boring. <laughs> I like that, actually. And uh, anyway, Ephesians 5, 16. <laughs> Making the best use of time because the days are evil. The days are evil. We'll talk more about that here. In a, you know, but I believe the Holy Spirit gives us a spiritual uh, a heightened and spiritual, uh, 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 intensified and uh, increased and, and a sharpened awareness of things, you know, just like me out in the backyard with, with little E, you know, call Ricky or text him, you know, and, uh, and God put that opportunity there. And so uh, we need to listen and, and keep our eyes and our ears open and, uh, all the time. Remember the, uh, the, our eye gates and our ear gates, you know, because he will speak to us. And, uh, and then we have to move on that, of course. Uh, I've said this several times in a row, but I'll say it again. I said it with Tim uh, Moon the other day. E. Stanley Jones says, to, to be the instrument of the purposes of God is the highest thing in life. To be the instrument of the purposes of God is the highest thing in life. So if you're bored, have you really given yourself over to the Lord as an instrument? You know, because if you haven't, then I challenge you to do that. If you, have you really given, given your talents and everything? you Have you really surrendered it over to him? But are you afraid? Well, hell, you know, if I get religious, I show people I'm religious, I'll never make it. As a, you know, you got to forget all that stuff. Let me tell you, some doors, yeah, some doors can shut, but God will open bigger doors for you than those that are shut. I would be in a different place, I know, probably, if I didn't preach so much. But let me tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to God for, for uh, his blessings in my life, and there's no way I could ever repay. I talked to my mom at 96 years old. She said, he's so good to me. I wouldn't want to live without him. And I said, Mom, neither would I. And the good thing is we don't have to. And so I'm, I'm not bored with the Lord, and I hope you're not. But if you are, if you're bored with life, then I'm telling you, God can turn your life upside down, sideways, backwards and forwards, everything, if you'll just give it all to him. He'll do things in your life because he wants to be a blessing in your life. He will, in fact, give you the desires of your heart. And I'm not talking about just being religious or talking or preaching or getting it. You know what? I'm not talking about going out and starting a church. I'm talking about just don't be ashamed of him and use your gift for the, for the glory of God. I play a lot of secular songs, you know, but, uh, and I play a lot of songs that I've written and I get by with a lot of stuff. Let me tell you, uh, because I'm a musician, but the Lord uses all of it. I, I've had people walk out in my services. I, you know, I didn't come here some guitar player and they throw things around. I had one guy that just took his hand and walked out of the church where I was at, took his hands and just, and just, it, it just threw my CDs and shirts and all over, all over the place. And, you know, I didn't come here for this. And I'm telling you, you can't please everybody, but you please him. You give it to him and give it to the Lord, you know. And if they would have owned, I saw other people just walk out. But if I thought, if you just stay to the end, because it all points up this way. And there were people that got saved, people that gave their hearts to the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord just blessed, you know. So I may not do uh, a ministry like other people expect me to do, you know. But that's okay. God wants you to be who you are. Just give it to him, and he'll open doors he'll, that no man can shut. I pray all the time, God, open doors no man can shut, and shut doors no man can open, right? In Colossians 4, 5, walk in wisdom toward outsiders in, in making the best use of our time. In Galatians 6 and 10, so then as we have the opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially to those that are of the household of faith. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, 16, 17. And be very careful then how you live, not as some unwise, or not as unwise, but as wise. And then, uh, and then it says, making the most of every opportunity, 
because the days are evil. And a message says, because these are desperate times. And you would agree with that. Making the most of every opportunity. And therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Understand what his will is. Let the Holy Spirit give you a heightened awareness. And also stay in the word. Stay in the word of God. And uh, in Matthew chapter 4, uh, <laughs> Jesus was walking around the, the edge of the sea and he saw these fishermen. Of course, we know them as Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And, and, uh, and he challenged them. He said, uh, you know what? He said, uh, follow me and I will make you fishers of men and you'll catch men. And they immediately left their nets. At, at one translation says, at once, at once. How many of you have had that at once a moment in your life. How many of you that God has just spoken to your heart, you know, to follow him and at once you turn this over completely, 100%, not just partial, but all of it. You turned it over to the Lord. Lord, not my will, but thy will. Do you trust God? I mean, do you really, in Psalm 73, or it's actually Psalms 37, it, you know, he says, trust in the Lord and do good. You'll dwell in the land and you'll be fed. If you don't trust your wife, or you, you've heard me say this, if you, in any relationship, if, if there's not trust, then it's not a good relationship. If you can't trust God, then you're not going to have a good relationship with the Lord. Do you trust that his will is the best thing for you in your life? If you do, and, and you know, then you surrender all of it to him. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And then commit that way. Commit your way. What is your way? if you play guitar or if you teach or whatever you might do, commit your way to him and he will bring those desires to pass. Read that it's in Psalms 37 and it's pretty clear. And, uh, and so Jesus said uh, at, at once, he said, follow me. And at once they followed and immediately they weren't bored anymore. I tell you from there on out for the rest of their life. Peter had no idea that one day he would preach one of the greatest sermons that even today has ever been preached on the day of Pentecost, and then people talk about him every week and perhaps every day in the world for the last 2,000 years. I mean, would he have ever known? And he was just a fisherman. Man, let me tell you, they weren't bored just being fishermen because there were a lot of fish back then and, uh, and so, and, uh, in the Sea of Galilee. And uh, in Luke chapter 19 there was a little man that was hated by everybody. He was probably bored. Uh, he, he was a tax collector. He was a tr known as a traitor, an extortioner, a thief. They hated it. He wanted to see Jesus. I'm sure nobody, no, you're not getting in here. You know, you just stay in your own place. And uh, so he was a short man. He climbed up in a tree, a sycamore tree. You know him as Zacchaeus. You remember my song, Zacchaeus? You remember that? <laughs> time I wrote, well, when I first wrote that, the first title I had was Zacchaeus Coming Down. That was in it. In the... Zacchaeus, what a great story, you know. But boy, when Jesus invited, he says, I'm coming to your house. He immediately got out of that tree at once. 
he got out of that tree. He says, I'm coming over to your house. And he took him to his home. And then he was, he was a changed life. And not only was he changed, everybody knew he was changed. I mean, from there on out, his life was not being a boring tax collector or a hated tax collector anymore. But from there on out, I mean, people, he says, I promise. He says, if, I, if I've stolen from anybody, you know, he says, I'll, I'll give back four times what I took from them. You know, and he said, I'll give the half of, of all my, everything I have uh, to the poor. And uh, what a change that Jesus made in his life because he decided to surrender and he gave it all to him. He gave it all to the Lord. And that's a great thing. And uh, look at uh, David in, uh, in 1 Samuel. And in the, when uh, uh, actually uh, uh, when David was uh, just a shepherd boy, you think about all the time he had was spending with the sheep, well, he could have just been bored out of his gourd, you know, but he was no doubt practicing. He, he taught himself how to play a harp and, uh, it, and also how to get really uh, proficient with a, with a sling. And so especially those two things, I'm sure nobody could out-sling him. And uh, he was an amazing musician too. Because and when Samuel came over and they it stirred up that whole town Bethlehem. What are you doing here? And God spoke to him to anoint a, a new person as king, and he had had enough of Saul. And of course he didn't. He said you know went to his first son all the way down. He said no, David was the one. He said bring him out of the fields. And here comes this uh, nice looking uh, you know young man who's sun tanned and you know and he probably had his harp with him. And he said you know. Yes, sir, what, what, what can I do, you know? And, and he anointed David. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit of God anointed him to be king. For, he anointed him for the rest of his life. And at the very moment that God was anointing David to be the new king, the, uh, just as, as much as the, the power of God was flowing into him, the power of God was flowing out of Saul. And that's when he started having these terrible, probably migraines and darkness came over him. And he, he said, provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. <laughs> and I love that. He, so he brought, oh, he called a musician in. And of course they brought in David. And so uh, all that paid off, all that work that he had done, you know, and he was just probably, you know, take, well, I'll just, you know, I got to watch sheep all night I'll, and all day, so I'll just bring my harp with me. And and, uh, and the next thing you know, he's playing before a king. Isn't that something? And then, of course, right after that, because he had the anointing, uh, and, and he was also fearless. Even his, uh, his dad's uh, servants said that he was fearless. And, and uh, you know, he's not afraid. That boy's not afraid of anything. And so it's an amazing story. But look what happened when God's anointing, anointed came on him. And he, be, he began to play uh, for Saul. And, uh, and it calmed the evil spirit from him. And then the next thing you know, he's using his sling uh, to knock down the giant and then killed him with his own sword. And then after that, he was marrying the king's daughter. And so Saul became his father-in-law. <laughs> And so you talk about getting out of boredom. I'm telling you, God changed his life like that. And so God can do that if you'll give everything to him. And so uh, I was just going to uh, actually ask you, are you, if you've been praying about something, what is it you've been praying? My son this week, he'd been praying about a job, this particular job for a while. And it was, the, it was the longest time. I mean, it was just one of those kind of things. And we were just believing, well, let's just be in agreement and thank the Lord. And I mean, all of a sudden, boom, just like that, it, everything changed. It, it's, it's a timing thing, oftentimes. Uh, you know, I, I had a friend of mine, and you may have heard me say this, uh, but a friend of mine said, man, I prayed that for years ago. And, you know, I asked God, why didn't you give me that years ago? He wanted to build a beautiful chapel to the Lord, you know, and and, uh, and he said, because my greatest asset for answering prayer is timing. My greatest asset. And I, and I stopped him. What what'd you just say to me? He said, Doyle, God owns it all. He said, he's, he's not just uh, waiting on us. I mean, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, but it's the right time. He's waiting until we are ready, actually. 
But he said, timing is everything. And so, I mean, and the next thing you know, the director's calling him and everything just opened up and the Lord is just blessed. My daughter had an opportunity the other day and she contacted me at the same time and I sent her a prayer on the phone. And uh, I said, Lord, I thank you for favor and, and for blessing and thank you for wisdom beyond herself. And, uh, and God just answered every one of those prayers and she was not familiar with this uh, uh, particular these programs on the computer and she was at a hospital and and the Lord just began to it just started clicking but she was nervous at first she told me this today and then uh, she was in an operating room and God just gave her favor and this older gentleman it was a surgeon and ask her was asking her questions and uh, and then later on this nurse who and Heidi just loved her and uh, she said you don't realize who that is he was one of the founding uh, doctors of this whole, and it is a huge uh, group of, of uh, like hospitals in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. And she says, no, he was one of the very first that ever to ever do this. And then Heidi has just been a, it, God gave her favor. He said, we, what would it take to get you here every day? And he said, we want you here all the time. And so here it goes from this offer. She said, Dad, I knew I had the opportunity and I couldn't say no, but inside I was just so nervous and so scared. And sometimes uh, we, we can be scared. We can be nervous. But when opportunity knocks, move on it. And no, Because God wouldn't open a door of effectual like this for you if he wouldn't equip you to do it. And that's the truth. And, and if God calls you, then he's equipped you. I had an old preacher tell me one time, he says, Doyle, why would you get nervous at doing this? Because I told him, you know, uh, I was going to play at this particular place. And I said, I don't, you know, I just don't feel worthy. And he said, why, why wouldn't you? He says, you know, where the appointment is, the provision will be. And he said, when God calls you to something, nobody in the whole world is fit for that job except you. No one else. God chose you to do that. And so just, you know, gird up your loins, whatever that is, <laughs> and go out and do it. Amen. And so uh, I just wanted to share one other thing to you. Uh, when I was, uh, oh, it's been a few years ago, I was out in uh, the high desert, and there was a man that says, you know, you ought to write a book. And I just kind of, we were taking photos out in uh, uh, Nathan York, a photographer friend of mine, and we were doing this thing out in Joshua Tree. I was with Step One Records back then. And this pastor went along with us because he knew the area, lived there, Doug Young. He said, you should write a, you should write a book one day. And, uh, and I laughed. I said, me write a book? I mean, my, my life, I thought, yeah, it's pretty boring to most people. And he said, no, and you're going to. And I thought, well, that's a back burner thing. But I, it never left me that he planted that seed. And then one day when Steve Lyon, who was the editor-in-chief at that time with Moody Publisher, said, Doyle, I'm on the streets of Chicago after a gig one night with Taylor. And he was helping me load my car. And he says, it's time you write a book. And, uh, <laughs> and it took me about a year to get a couple of stories to it. And the next thing you know, uh, we had published a book, you know? And so when God puts that seed in you. And sometimes it takes the time, but when the timing was right, uh, God opened the door. I was at, at this, with the same guy, Doug Young, and uh, it was about a year or two later, and I got a call from Bob Whitaker of the Grand Ole Opry, and he said, Doyle, I want you to be on the Grand Ole Opry. If you don't mind, I need for you to do me a favor. He says, I want you to be on a, a guitar man night that I'm putting together. And I mentioned this a few weeks ago when I was honoring Dwayne Eddy. He said, I've already asked Dwayne and I got a, 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 you know, a thumbs up from him and also Chet Atkins, I put in a call to him. And the, the uh, Grand Ole Opry Guitar Trio, uh, which th those were some of the most amazing. Jimmy Capps you know, was in a Spider Wilson, Leon Rhodes, I mean, come on. This was a, these guys were like my heroes. And God, oh, all of a sudden, you don't think I was nervous? Oh, my Lord. I, of course I was. But when God put that, you know, he gave me that opportunity, and I knew it was a God thing. And uh, I tell you, when that happens, you won't get bored. God can turn your life around. He can turn you upside down if you will just give it to him because he knew I already had. I mean, 
I was uh, Bob Rabonis, uh, who used to work for Taylor. Uh, he was a, a artist guy, and he and he said, uh, "Doyle, they want you to play." Uh, he said, "We're gonna." I think Guitar Center had something to do with uh, with Eric uh, Clapton, uh, and I'm going too long, I know, on this, but the uh, C Crossroads thing it was in Dallas, and there were so many. Eric Johnson was on it, but he was on the big stage and all these. And I saw Eric Clapton, and I saw all these great. And ZZ Top was there, so many people. Well, I was on a little stage in, in, the, in the back with another friend of mine, Lawrence Juber, but the whole thing was huge. I mean, it was still big, but, uh, but you know, I thought, well, you know, we're doing our little part here, and, uh, and it was an honor to be asked. It was an honor to be there, and I met some great people. I met John Mayer, a lot of people, and suddenly Bob Rabonis came up and said, Doyle, and he entered, he said, I want, I want to, you, you, do you know James Burton? I said, well, I met James when I was with J.D. Sumner and DeSamps. And he said, yeah, I remember you, Doyle. How do you do? And we talked a little bit. He says, we're putting together a, a festival. I'd like for you to be on it. Well, he called, sure enough. And, uh, and I was on there. I had my daughter Haley on there. And we prayed and joined hands. And Eric Johnson was on the show, Steve Warner, Brad Paisley, uh, Sonny Landreth, Oh, I can't remember who all was on there. Uh, John Goodman, I think, was the uh, was the MC, the actor, and there were some huge uh, people. And the spirit of the Lord was so strong. The anointing was so strong. I remember uh, it was another great guitar. I just won't say his name, but it there, it was so recognizable and it touched every. Said, "How did you just touch every soul?" in this whole building. I said, I didn't do that. He did. But I'm going to tell you, he did. I t Haley said, Dad, I've never, I've been around you all my life. I've never seen such a power and anointing like that. I said, well, that is amazing. I just feel, I felt in my fingertips. And it was just such a power. And I've, I, we have been close friends and with some of these other players too ever since that time. Because, you know, you can't deny the power of God when it's when it's there and you sense it and it's real and it goes beyond my guitar playing, and I was invited three more times after that. I, I was on his uh, four uh, festivals that he did in Shreveport, and he and he said to me, I'll never forget it, and I'm not bragging on myself, but he said, Doyle, I, I have I have a lot of access to a lot of stars, and last time I was I was there, even Priscilla Presley was there, and. Uh, Steven Seagal, the actor, was there. And oh man, there's so many people. But he said, when you played, and you, when you played at my uh, before, he said, every time you play, he said, he shows up. And I'd rather have, this is James Burton talking, I'd rather have him there than anyone else. Let me tell you, you can't, if you don't deny God, if you put him first in your life, God will promote you. If you promote him, God will promote you, and your life will not be boring. I promise you that. <laughs> I want to sing this old song before we leave. And uh, oh my goodness, I, I've gone over time. I know I have, but uh, all to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will live. Trust him in his presence daily. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior.
Father God, thank you, Lord, today for this message. And I thank you, Lord, for the, all the stories in the Bible, even like the, 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 the young boy with the five loaves and the two fishes. His mother would have never known that we're talking about this in 2024. <laughs> and people probably every day since then for 2,000 years have told that story somewhere in the world about the five loaves and the two fishes. She made lunch for her little boy. Her little boy carried it to Jesus and he surrendered it to him. And Lord, we know what we can do. I know what I can do on this, Lord, but when I give it to you and I surrender it to you, there's no telling what you can do with it. God, turn our lives upside down. Don't let us be bored Christians. If we are, something's wrong. Lord, I just pray that you will just bless us and turn on a new light and a new chapter for somebody here today. And we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name, if there's anyone that hasn't received Christ, say, forgive me of my sins. I receive you as Lord. Receive me in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. God bless you, folks. Thanks for joining me on my Sunday String Along.